breaking news. Uh, University of Missouri President Tim Wolf resigning. This just in, he has resigned amid criticism of the way he's handled a multitude of racial issues. A uh, very divisive time on the campus. And help us find out exactly what's going on and give us um, some more specific background here. Talk to T.J. Moe, who played there, former White Owl for Mizzou from 2009 to 2012. And he's also in the media. He works for CBS 920 AM in St. Louis and also inside STL.com. TJ, it's Tiki and Tierney. How are you today? Thanks for joining us. Doing well, absolutely. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. You know, as, as we were in commercial break, Tim Wolf resigned. Um, can you just create uh, a picture, paint a picture for our audience and us as well, what exactly, aside, you know, we know the hunger strike and we know about the black players uh, boycotting football activities, but what has the climate been like on campus encompassing everything for a while under Tim Wolf's reign? Well, I can't speak to, you know, there's 35,000 students on campus, and I can't speak to how everybody's feeling. I know going back to even before President Wolf was there during my time at Mizzou in 2010, there was an incident at the Black Culture Center where overnight someone went to Walmart, got a bunch of cotton balls and threw them in bushes. So there was an act of racism. Okay, it's, it was an isolated incident for that year, but it's something that people now go back to and say, well, is this a pattern? Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I don't think something that happened five years ago on one night constitutes a pattern, but it's there. Mm-hmm. And then you have a few of the things um, over the past year where there's multiple instances of white students you know, yelling the N-word at black students as they walk by, and and they've all been documented cases, one of which was to um, a president of one of the university's, you know, student commissions of some sort. And um, so that's where that started to gain traction. He posted on Facebook how he wonders how his simple existence can upset such a people. Yeah. And... So as, as they've gone on now, um, a few things have happened. There, there is one incident with Tim Wolf where he was caught on camera basically giving his definition of systematic oppression. And he said, leading up to it, listen, I, I, you, I can give you a definition. You're not going to like it. And they're like, well, what is it? And he said something to the effect of you're oppressed because you think you're oppressed. Wow. Right. Well, as a, as a, president of the university whether you think that or not yeah you don't get to say it yeah um and honestly it's <clears throat> i it was irrelevant in the first place um not that it, systematic oppression isn't there that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is all of the instances that have been brought up none of them constitute systematic oppression systematic oppression uh is is laws or practices that uh, hold a single group down uh, that is enforced by the government or the police or, or whatever. All the instances that we have named yeah. have been acts of bigotry or racism. On, a, on, on, a, on, a, on, an, on an individual level, TJ, is what you're saying. And I, and I, and I think by and large you're right. But what, what happened that, a lot, that I guess forced the Missouri football players, particularly the black players, even though a lot of the white players stood in solidarity with them, including the head coach, uh, to get them involved in this and really put national media pressure on on this situation. So the, you know the hunger strike. Yeah. The, the young man's name is Jonathan Butler. Yep. And I think this uh, this started right after maybe the homecoming parade. There was an incident too where um, a group of students was protesting, and Tim Wolf is in a car. He had a driver. And they kept asking him questions as he was driving through the parade, and and he said, no comment, I'm not speaking. And they were trying to stop the progress of his vehicle. And, you know, at at a very slow pace, the driver just kept driving. And so there was that deal where he said that he's showing us no respect. And anyway, shortly after that, I don't know if that's what tipped it off exactly, but shortly after that, uh, Jonathan Butler decided he was going to go on his hunger strike, and that has that has been sort of what catapulted this whole thing onto a newsworthy story because then the local media started to pick it up. I realized the national media just heard about this on Sunday, but I was well aware of it for the last two weeks. 
now the last week probably, uh, that a lot, multiple stories have been written on it. And I think it's not clear at this point who approached who, whether it was Jonathan Butler approaching the football team or the football team approaching Jonathan Butler. Um, I think perhaps it was a, a football player approaching him, but that's a little bit of speculation. I know they went to the LBC, the Legion of Black Legions, who was at one point involved in one of the uh, racist remarks prior to, I think it was in mid-October, they were getting ready for a play, and a white student walks by and calls them the N-word. And anyway, so they have they have partnered with Jonathan Butler and, and all supported each other. So I, my, the thing, what I have gathered is that an African-American football player approached them, said, how can we help? And they said, I don't think you guys understand the power that you have. TJ, yeah, let me, really let, let, I got to ask you something here. Uh, very interesting. It's TJ Moe, by the way, who played at Missouri. And if just tuning in, Tiki and Tierney, University of Missouri President Tim Wolf uh, has, in fact, resigned. That broke within the uh, last two, three minutes here. I mean, common sense, real world stuff. All right. If I'm walking down the street, whether I'm in New York, which is where I am now, or the state of Missouri, which I've been many times, and I drop around the N word, um, I mean, have there been physical confrontations? Like, I, I don't know young African Americans who should or would take that in such a docile manner in terms of not responding physically. Is there any, were there any fights? I mean, it just seems unbelievable that white students in the year 2015 walk around and say that, and there's no fights. How is that surprising to you? You just watched That's the shocking to me. South Carolina shoot up an entire church. No, 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 no forget no, no, forget about that. No, 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 don't get it. The church is different. Young college students. I just don't know any young people or any people right now who are conditioned to hear that word and accept it without some sense of physical retaliation. That make any sense? I think it makes perfect sense. People really? are ridiculous. I mean, <clears throat> I, I bring up the church because that wasn't about the church. That was about race. That was a kid that was so against the black race that he decided he wanted to go into a place and kill black people. Like, that was his goal. If a guy's willing to do that, you don't think there's people, to a lesser extent, willing to just... No, no, TJ, I'm not saying it's, it wasn't said. I'm not saying that. That's not my point at all. I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like... T, do you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, know, I don't I know think that saying. black people would take that without responding but in I, some I, manner. Yeah, I think maybe you're not giving blacks enough credit because what happened in the church situation in South Carolina, to TJ's point, was that they embraced uh, forgiveness right away. Uh, with with, with uh, I forget his name now uh, with the, the the Dylan Roof yeah Dylan Roof they forgave him almost immediately uh, because what I think Dylan Roof wanted to happen was a race war right he wanted mm -hmm. he wanted them to retaliate in a certain way and make you know make his cause known but they did the exact opposite which surprised a lot of national media but I think if you have ever been raised in a southern black church or been around that kind of environment you understand that that you knew that that was going to happen you knew that they were going to forgive him and not outrage this isn't the hood that we're talking about and and again Columbia Missouri is also not the hood that we're we're, we're talking about but back to the is, the issue down there uh, in Missouri uh, TJ as the president steps down, what happens now, right? Because it felt like the Missouri football players get on board. They say that we are, you know, we're not going to play. Economic pressure seems like it's now put on the University of Missouri. What happens now? Well, he steps down as of a few minutes ago, and he released a statement yesterday that said nothing about him stepping down. Yeah. So it seems as if this is not what he wanted to do. He would have loved to come to the negotiation table <clears throat> and talk through some things. Uh, it appears that was not an option. And that, to me, I w if I was a leader of a university, a leader of a large corporation, a leader of anything, I would be scared to death right now of what extreme measures can prove, whether you were or were not at fault. And that, that argument can be had here with Tim Wolf because he has done nothing. He, and, and they say, well, that's negligence. And he hasn't responded in a timely manner. But to say he's fully at fault, I don't know what him resigning accomplishes. Yeah. Except that a lot of people now are upset with him and perhaps he's not fit to do his job and can no longer perform at a high level. But what does firing a president do to stop ignorant white people from screaming the N-word across campus? Well, it doesn't do when anything. When does it become his fault 
that these guys are doing that because if it's the fault of the leaders, we should have impeached Barack Obama a long time ago because there's been a lot of murders in this country under his watch. Yeah, I mean, I, I just – the leadership thing, that's just – that's to, to satisfy the, the public. I mean, we know how the world spins now. Yeah. And, you know, we, we spent a lot of time this morning on the Hardy and, and Jerry Jones situation. And while it's, you know, it's radically different in terms of emotion, uh, I, I do think it I, – I, like, we look at Jerry Jones and we say, well, well how, can you, how can you co-sign this? And I don't know. I think whether it's a university or it's a team, I mean, you have to point to the top on some level. And if there's complete unrest and division, you have to look at that person, whether it's right or wrong – the buck kind of stops at their desk, don't, yeah, don't you think? But comparing Jerry Jones to Tim Orphan, in this instance, is two different things. Jerry Jones brought in a person who has committed an act that a lot of people deem is unfit to be playing in the NFL now. The only student that had been caught screaming uh, racist slurs has been expelled at Missouri. Mm. Yeah, so the necessary steps were actually taken. It just seemed yeah. it just the well, that's cult- what I'm saying to but, satisfy the public. But, but the culture, screams. the culture didn't seem to be changing. And that's what was making people upset and ultimately led to Tim Wolf stepping down. But people don't understand that things take time. Yeah, Chancellor Lofton has already announced that he was going to be implementing diversity training classes for all incoming students this upcoming year. And they were trying to get the details together to do that. But that's not good enough. Yeah. Well, what is good enough? What is going to change people? What is going to stop people from being so ignorant when you grow up in a town like I did of all white people? Yeah. Right? What turned my head on this thing yeah. was becoming a football player at the University of Missouri and understanding cultures. Yeah, for those and realizing who realizing yeah. how the, to love people and be different. For those but who don't know, you can't T- do that without educating. Yeah, for those who don't know, TJ is actually Caucasian. He's not. He's not a black guy. He's on the football team, but he's he's Caucasian. So that that perspective probably changes your perception of this conversation that we're having. And we appreciate, TJ, what you're saying, because it is, it is interesting, some of the points that you point out, especially the fact that as a president, you don't necessarily have control over the ignorance of other people, e- even though you can try to put in p- a position policies that prevent ignorance from being spread. Yeah. No, Tim, thanks for the, thanks for the um, perspective. Good job. Really appreciate it. TJ Moe. Yeah.